Hello everyone, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com in the beautiful but rainy Pacific Northwest. I've been using fountain pens for decades, but just a few months ago I watched one of those amazing videos of someone effortlessly writing in a gorgeous Spencerian script, and I became fascinated with flex nibs, and I decided to get one. I might as well mention now that this is not going to be one of those videos. I don't do any sort of calligraphy. I just like the idea of being able to add a little extra character to my writing when I feel like it. Anyway, I didn't want to use a dip pen because I do most of my writing while I'm traveling, and that's just not very practical. And I didn't want to spend a fortune on some vintage flex nib fountain pen. But I did find a few different current options to try out, and they each had their own advantages. First, I started looking through the options on the market for flex nib pens, and I ordered one of these. I had seen the options from Noodler's pens like the Ahab and a few other popular models, but then I saw the Conklin OmniFlex nib on a Durograph. With a narrow waist like this, I figured that the flex must be really good. And I'm very happy with the pen itself. It feels good in the hand, it's nice and solid and well balanced. But when I inked it up and gave it a try, the results were disappointing. Despite the fact that the nib looks as though it should be very soft and flexy, it hardly flexes at all. There is some flex, as you can see, but even when I give the nib quite a bit of pressure, really too much, my line width doesn't thicken up a whole lot. So I continued my search and discovered that a lot of people are converting their cheap Jin Hao pens and using them with Zebra G dip pen nibs. I watched a video and it looked pretty easy, so I went on to Amazon and I bought a pack of five of these Jin Hao 750 pens for about $17, and a pack of 10 Zebra G nibs for about eight. If you want to do this, I'd recommend getting the more expensive titanium nibs, which won't wear out so quickly. This is the stock nib on the Jinhao pen, which looks pretty normal, except that this one has a patchy sunset all over it. If you take it out of the pen, you can see that the Zebra G nib is pretty similar in size, although you will need to flatten it out a little bit with some pliers. It takes some work, and it was a good thing that I bought five of these pens because I almost immediately destroyed the feed on my first one after uh, an excessively flattened nib got stuck halfway into the section. If you want a detailed video about how to do this conversion, let me know in the comments. But once you get it right, it'll look something like this. Add some ink, and the result is pretty awesome. When you don't flex the nib, you get a very fine, needle-thin line of ink. But with even just a little bit of pressure, the springy metal of the nib flexes out wonderfully, and you get this amazing contrast between the thick, flexed lines and the fine lines of the straight tip. And you get this for the cost of a $4 pen and a $1 nib. Unfortunately though, the tip of this nib is very scratchy. There's no ball tip on the end, so it will sometimes snag fibers and cut into your paper. And these are disposable nibs that will need to be replaced regularly, which means repeating this whole installation process. So again, I started looking for better options. 
And that was when I found this. This is the Ultraflex nib sold by Fountain Pen Revolution. It's a standard number six nib, so it will work in all of these Jinhao pens without any modification. And of course, any other pen like my Conklin Durograph that takes a number six nib also. And compared to the Zebra nib, it's quick and easy to install. Just take the nib in the crook of your finger and grab it with your thumb and pull the nib and the plastic feeds straight out without twisting. From there, the nib and the feed are separate and you just get rid of the original nib and put the new one in its place on the feed. Locate the flat side of the hole in the pen section and push the new nib and feed back in. This one isn't uh, aligned properly and I'll have to fix it when I'm not doing this on camera. I've ordered three of these things now, including one with a gold vest, because once you get the nib in, the flex is wonderful. It's soft and springy like the zebra nib, and since it has an extra fine ball tip and is intended for fountain pens, it's great for everyday writing and should last for years. Incidentally, this video is not sponsored by anyone, it's just the product of my current obsession. The tip is not quite as fine as the zebra nib, but you can still get a very fine line depending on your ink. I happen to be using some wet ones here. The other downside is that these nibs cost $19 each, more than my set of five Jinhao pens. Of course, if you're comparing this to the cost of a flex nib pen like my Durograph, or especially a vintage pen, $19 really isn't much. But it is more than the Zebra G nib setup, and if you're just interested in playing around with the flex nib, that may be enough for you. So to sum things up, the Conklin Omniflex nib on the Durograph has the advantage of being simple and reliable, but it's expensive and more importantly, just doesn't really flex very much. The Zebra G nib on the Jin Hao pens, on the other hand, is nice and cheap, and it can give you a needle thin line, and the nib is very soft and flexible. Unfortunately, they're also tricky to install and once they are installed, they're not especially reliable. The tip is pretty scratchy, and it doesn't feel great for day-to-day -day writing, and the nibs wear out and have to be changed regularly. For me, the FPR Ultraflex nib is a best-of-both-worlds option. It costs less than 20 bucks, and since it's a standard size, it's easy to install on any pen that takes a standard number 6 nib. It has wonderful flex and it's reliable, like any other good fountain pen nib. That said, the nib is not quite as fine as a Zebra G nib, and of course, it costs more than 80 cents. It's also more work than buying a pen with a nib already in it, although you can also buy those from the Fountain Pen Revolution site, I just haven't done it yet. So what do you think? Are there better flex nib options out there for fountain pens? I'd love to hear about them if there are. I'm no expert with flex nibs, so take this for what it's worth, just the experiences of a novice, but I'm hoping that my experiences here might help some other beginners know what to expect from what's out there. 
If you're interested in seeing more videos like this about inks and pens, just give me a thumbs up and subscribe below. And that's it. Enjoy your pens and don't forget to actually use them. See you next time.